So, uh, did you do anything cool on Thanksgiving? Yeah, we, we have a great tradition in my family. We actually take a metal trash can and we put it over top of a turkey outside in the yard. We light the whole thing on fire. That's how we cook our turkeys. It's pretty sweet. So here we are after Thanksgiving and we mentioned in our last video that the most important thing for us to be thankful for is our Lord's incarnation, yeah. is the incarnation of Jesus Christ, Amen. the Son of God. <laughs> yeah, and I think that um, this is just not something that's like, I think, fully appreciated always anymore because it's just so part of our faith, but it also is something that I think a lot of people do misunderstand. Um, so they think they understand it, but they don't. And I think that uh, it's such an important thing to be to be thankful for because of the magnitude of what it is mm -hmm. and um, the, the the centrality with which our Lord being both man and God or I should say God and man as the catechism says uh, the importance of holding the holding that intention right and that's a tough thing for us to hold intention in our minds but it's important because it's true right yeah it's it's, it's really important to, to remember that our Lord Jesus Christ is one person Right. He's a divine person, right. unlike us who are human persons, and unlike the angels, which are angelic persons, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is a divine person, one person, and at the same time has two natures, both God and man. And this human nature he took to himself 2,020 years ago or so and, and became one of us, right? And that's the incarnation. It's this incredible gift which we have been given, like we haven't done anything to earn. <laughs> in right. fact, we did everything to like not, not earn it, <laughs> and, and, right. and, but still God chose to give it, you know? Yeah, and, I, it, and, it's, and it's, it's only, it's really incredible because I think that one of the things that is really also kind of underappreciated is that the, the claims that Jesus makes in the Gospels, right, are the most radical claims anybody has ever made. Mm -hmm. um, Right, I mean, we have, so we have historians at the time, like the Jewish historian Josephus, and then we have some other Roman historians who write about um, the, the event of Christ coming uh, from a distance. They're people who either lived further away, or even if they lived in Palestine at the time, uh, they didn't know Jesus, but they write about his life uh, from, from a distance. But the only records, the only accounts we have of his life um, that are like an inside look, that are by people who knew him, are the Gospels, right. right, and are um, the letters from the Apostles to the early church. And I think that it's really important to recognize that he does in the Gospels, right, Jesus claims to have a divine prerogative, right? He claims that he who loves father or mother or sister or brother or wife or, like, anybody more than me is not worthy of me. And that's just, like, we hear that, I'm shocked. But like, if he's God, then that has to be true. Then God has to take first priority because of who he is. And so I think that, right, there's, a, there's been this move in, among you know, philosophers and educated people in the past couple centuries, there's been this move to kind of try and look at Jesus as like a founder of a, of a movement and kind of akin to um, a Gandhi, mm -hmm. right? or akin to a Mohammed, or somebody who had a ton of influence, and they're, they're, they kind of started this movement. But it, ultimately that doesn't hold up, because if you, if you read the only accounts we have of his life, he claims to be God. Yeah. He claims that he is to be worshipped. He claims that he is to be loved, and that we are to love like him. So it actually is not possible to reduce him to a great moral teacher. Um, as some have tried to do. You're left with a couple options, right? Jesus Christ is either a liar, insane, or he is who he says he was, if you believe the gospel account. And if you don't believe the gospel account, then um, you can't really just claim, well, I believe that Jesus was some kind of great moral teacher and then the gospel's embellished. You don't, there's no, there's, well, where are you getting that information, mm -hmm. right? You, you have to either accept the gospel account as it's presented, or you have to show me why you're able to pick and choose in the Gospels what you want, as many people have done, I'm sure, um, without any real proof for why they do that. Yeah, one of the other aspects of that too is that 
you know, you mentioned some of the other people, historical figures like Gandhi or, you know, Muhammad, whatever, whatever else, well, whatever else we're going to refer to, you know, none of them were foretold like right. Jesus was. And that's one of the points that Bishop Fulton Sheen makes in, in, in his writings on our Lord and his incarnation and to distinguish him from these other historical figures, which are yeah. like, oh, he's just like one of them. Well, Jesus was he was talked about for centuries prior to his coming right and then came and fulfilled everything that was said right and nobody else has ever done that right and uh, it's just this this miraculous moment of the incarnation the taking mm -hmm. of flesh right. by God himself like the creator becoming the creature in a sense taking the creature in onto right. himself and living amongst us, which is just incredible. Without giving up his divinity. Without giving up his divinity, absolutely, right. yeah. Which is the only way we can then be redeemed. Right, um, right. Yeah. Yeah, if it, without without the incarnation, like if, if Jesus Christ did not come, if he was not human and divine, and if he did not come, and if he did not die, and if he did not, was, was not raised from the dead, if, he, if his resurrection on Easter Sunday, isn't, if none of that happened, then we do not have redemption. Right. Then we don't have hope in going to heaven. We don't have any answer to the deepest longings of the human heart. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I think that's, that's, that's why we are so grateful, is because he has come, and all those things have happened. Right. Um, and the lives of the saints witness to that, right? The lives of, the, of these holy men and women up and down the centuries of the church witness to his coming, and that he has accomplished something in their lives. St. Paul's one of them, and I guess just to close and keep it with the spirit of gratitude, I think it's in Ephesians, right in the beginning of Ephesians, but I'm not exactly sure about that. St. Paul says something to the effect of, you know, in Jesus Christ, God has given us every spiritual blessing in the heavens. Like, there's nothing greater because we have God himself who's come to set us free and to redeem us. So, express that gratitude towards God for the incarnation, um, especially throughout this season of Advent as we prepare to celebrate, again, his incarnation at Christmas.